Welcome back to the Social Seller Podcast with Connor Paulson, where we interview the world's highest quality communicators, professionals, business owners, creatives, and everything in between. It doesn't matter what industry you're in, if you're a high quality communicator, there's a good chance you're living a lot happier life, but you're also bringing those opportunities into your life almost like a magnet. My guarantee is that on this show, we only interview people that I, one, look up to, and two, that I know are gonna continue to kill the game for years to come, and I wanna make sure they're on your radar. But what I've learned is by asking the best questions, we get the best responses, and that's what the highest quality communicators, our social sellers, are all about. Let's hop inside to the Social Seller Podcast. I went through it, I had it. You know, one of the funniest memories in high school, we had to go and do our confessions with the priest. Uh, I can like be the a traditional Catholic way of like, yeah, I've, yeah. I've always seen the movies, but I never got to do uh, that. Not even, like not, e- the- not even in the booth. We had to do it actually on the uh, altar where they would do the, like you put your knees down on that comfort, like, like the padded thing. No, but I'm actually face to face with the guy the, my high school oh. did, it, did it different. Like you actually had to sit in church where he does his oh, yeah. welcome to private school. Yeah. So, and then I'm like, why am I going to tell you? <laughs> so, because I was always like, I'm a black and white realistic guy. I was like, I don't need a middle person. Like, I do that in business now. I don't need the middle person. I'll go directly to the principal. Like, I said, why do I need to tell you my sh-? I'm not telling you anything. He's like, well, you have to. That's how God knows. I'm like, I don't like this model. I'll tell him myself. And it led me into detention and stuff. But I was like, I'm not telling this guy. Why? Because you told me to? Yeah. I, don't, I don't agree with these rules. So there's certain aspects of religion I don't practice. Because if there's a God, if there's someone looking over us all, Seems like a lot of people to manage. Uh, I'm going to just throw out my thoughts directly, but more importantly, do good things with people like you, Oscar, whoever I meet. I want to do good. I want to go back and make good. And that's where I'm at. It's just that's how I'm wired right now. Damn. Not only are you a great communicator, I got to unpack two parts before I forget because you brought up a point, and this is something that's been on my mind. Oscar, I haven't shared this with you. I haven't shared this with anyone. Oh, boy. Oh, and no. no. Are you, you pregnant? <laughs> Third try, bro. Third try. Triplets. I'm doing this. I'm not even supposed to have this caffeine. Uh, Okay, so to me, spirituality is the thing that opened my eyes. Now, in my opinion, and where I'm at in life, and I think this is a a gradual transition, I see religion, I see the beauty in it, right? After business school, I was fortunate to move to Asia, or Southeast Asia, and, and we grew the company online, right? And this is when the digital nomad lifestyle is like, everyone wanted to do it, but very few were doing it, right? The four hour work week was out, but like no one had a company to kind of do it. Yeah. We were at this position that, that we were able to. Now, that opened my eyes living in Eastern culture. Now, I today definitely lean to Eastern culture. Now, more on the proactive aspects of like finding presence in, in any type of religion, right? My mother, very, very religious, and she spends two to three hours almost every single day, seven days a week, yeah. either in prayer, watching some kind of sermon or something, right? And I was turned off by it because it was almost, it felt like it was forced to me. Yeah. I didn't have a say. And what I didn't like about religion at a young age, and I, this is a little bit of the, like the entrepreneurial spirit, and also what got me in trouble in K through 12, um, I always <laughs> pushed the boundaries. And what I didn't like is when I asked questions about this God, that whenever it was a good question that I'd really put thought into and like I'd ask it and I was like, okay, I got a response. And I'd ask another one, the follow-up question the next week because I'd think about it for a week. Yeah. And then it would get to this point that it was, it, there isn't a response. This is, this is, this is, uh, this is faith. This is, this is why you're doing it. And to me, that was very difficult to comprehend. So I had this kind of turn up. Now, spirituality encompasses, now I am religious, but I see spirituality as something that encompasses everything, right? Yeah. Whether you, you're praying to Buddha or it's Allah or it's Jesus Christ, right? I see all of it and I think they are beautiful, right? And I see it all. I don't want to say there's a step above, but I see something more. Yeah. And when you've been on the spiritual journey, in my opinion, to a certain level, and I'm excited to see where a few years from now is like just diving in the last yeah. few years. It's, it's addicting. It's, I'm learning who I am more Good. than I ever have in my life. It is, it's encompassing all. I see religion is almost the stepping stone for the person that might not take the spiritual journey or care enough of, or like, they're happy, right? The majority of the world, we're all chasing happiness, right? Whether you think you're chasing money, you want to create a company, you want to start something from scratch because you don't want to win the lottery and you don't want people to say you got a handout, right? <laughs> no. Spirituality is just this over-encompassing, like, our religion is this, like, it's almost like this roadmap, right? We have this book and we have the religion and, and, um, it's, it's almost something easier to comprehend. And I, I have to be really careful with what I say because I, I am religious, right? Nothing against it. Now, I, I had a distaste for it for like a yeah. few years getting into it or getting into college. 
then it all came full circle. So the thing that I want to dive into is you mentioned AA and you mentioned how being accountable. Now something, the last three years of my life has been living more congruent than I've ever been before. And it's taken a lot of work. It's taken feeling lows that I had never felt, yeah. but it has broken free, right? I'm glad you're meeting this version of Connor because six months ago, I might look very similar to who I am, right. but I can tell you I'm a completely different person thanks to adversity and, and feeling lows that I didn't know existed. And it hits home for me because there are things that I need to amend and, and it was in my childhood. And I literally can think of names and, and that's what kills me and, and they've been in my mind. And so what I'm getting at is the last three years, I know I'm, I'm living authentically and I'm in line with my values and because of it, I'm attracting things that I've never attracted. I have full faith that everything comes to me at the right time yeah. and it's one thing to read it, but it took me years to finally fully live it, right? And it takes practices and, and routines that there are a couple names that come to mind in K through 12, right? I was athletic. I liked playing sports. I went to a school of like, you know, my graduating class was like 72, right? <laughs> Our town was like 4,000, right? Which is for anyone that's <laughs> not from rural America, 4,000 is a, a decent sized small town. That's a big rural. town. Yeah. That's a big town. The Piggly Wiggly is filled every... Uh, is that a real town? Piggly no, it's a uh, supermarket. Oh, uh, <laughs> okay. Shoot. All right. See, that's how they make fun of me from the Northeast. And then Mr. Oscar that grew up in the seventh largest city called San Diego. Dallas is number eight, just to give you context. How crazy is that? So where I'm getting at is the names that come to mind right away are... Matt Johnson, or not Matt Johnson, uh, Matthew Sorensen, oh, Corey yeah. Ringel. Yeah, but that guy was and a jerk. Jack no, no, no. I'm just See, I was the jerk. <laughs> well, and I bring these names up because they are on my mind and they're relationships that I want to amend. And I'm just not proud of how I was when I didn't know myself. Are you scared to reach no, out to No, them? no, no, no. I'm, I'm literally in this position. And with you saying it, like, I, it is in my notes that I will be contacting them. Like, Good. and I say their names simply because. I am not proud of how I was, like, how I portrayed myself, right? I definitely leaned, <laughs> I embraced the whole, like, jock culture. Now, I was fortunate to be social, and when it was like, you were the athlete, you had this, like, I was a straight-up bully at times, and I'm not proud of it, because that's not what I stand for at right. all. And no excuses, 100% accountability, but that's something in my mind, right? And I've never shared that simply because... You're growing. Yeah, you're yeah, growing. but it's almost embarrassing, right? It's not, embarrassing. Not, and it's not like, when you're, I don't want people that know me now to see this, but not when you're a is, child. Is, yeah, when you're, yeah, when yeah. you're a kid, there's a level of account. There's certain things that you, that yeah, that's wrong. But you got hormones. You have peer pressure. You have maybe upbringing in your house. There's so many factors that you just thrown into yeah. an environment. I don't. I respect what you're saying, and you should reach out to these people oh, just well. just to. Um, for your own peace of mind, you know, and, and if and if they remember it how you remember it, uh, hopefully they'll be warm and welcoming and appreciate the apology and, 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 and look at you like the man that you are today. And you know, you know when you're back in town, maybe you guys can yeah. go get some wings or something. But I I think you should when you're a kid you shouldn't you shouldn't hold that much pressure on you because nobody knows what the hell they're doing then. It's not it's yeah. and when I look back now like. Again, I purpose to say no excuses, but straight observations. Not only did I have no idea who I was, it was a reflection of the environment I was raised in. Yeah. What most people don't know is how the DHS was involved in my upbringing, right? right? And like, I thought it was the normal life. And yes, my upbringing and my dad, very old school, very disciplined. Yeah. And, and I'm proud of it. Like, I am so happy that happened because this is why I'm here. I do not regret anything. I'm so happy every single thing has happened. Getting in trouble K through 12 to even in college, I had a few doubt, like a few bouts with the law. Like I like to have fun. And I was a bartender, <laughs> number one party school. Problems came up, right? <laughs> but then it was like I hit this point. It was like this is not me. This doesn't make me happy. Good. Where the hell am I going, CP? Good. Whenever I start talking about CP, that's yeah. third person, Connor. I talk to myself quite a bit. All right. And I just wanted to mention that. Thank you, because seriously, this has been in my mind, and it's something. I, I view it like. The baggage, right? We all have baggage in so many forms. And I like to view it as these nuclear battleships that yeah, are like, yeah. they don't even have them on TV yet because this, this is a huge Navy base yeah. and the Navy SEALs, Hell Week is right there that I have, yeah. right? And I see them come by, right? I sit here, I work, and, and like I, growing up in Iowa, first of all, we didn't have water, but you see these ships go by, and I'm just like, damn, 
unreal. And then talking to Navy friends, it's like, yeah. yeah, these ships are run by nuclear power. Like, they can go around the world yeah. for 25 years straight and never have to refuel. You didn't have any of these ships in rural, rural America? <laughs> go <or> not. <laughs> The lakes where I grew up in the Mississippi. <laughs> Nothing like that went by. The midway wasn't sitting there. Maybe it was a U-boat. They just didn't come above water, so we never saw them. I don't know. I don't know. No, I appreciate that you say that, Ryan. What I love is through conversation, I, I get to learn. And yeah. I'm able to talk about this today because I know that I want to continue to live a congruent life. And I see it as this baggage. So what I'm getting at is I look at life as like this ship, right? Yeah. And the older I get, the more I'm aware of the baggage. And I view baggage like this, the, how I affected some of these individuals that, sadly, there were times that I would go out of my way to make sure that they were like, just, I don't even know, it was like this fucked up, like alpha male mindset of like, I was cool, so I, you almost had to act like this with certain people. Sure. And I view it like this ship, right? And that baggage in my life is like we're throwing an anchor down, right? So yeah. for, for um, Matt Sorensen, anchor down. For Corey, anchor down, right? These are all people in my grade. Zach Canoop, anchor down, right? And these are all anchors. Now, when you have three anchors down, is that ship gonna be able to go max capacity? No. No, and, and that baggage is only slowing you down. The only way to get that shit up, pull that anchor back, these are big anchors on these ships, right? Yeah. It's not a one-man show. And let's imagine that it's not a button. Yeah. <laughs> um, it, I appreciate you. Thank you. I'm, no. I'm literally going through. I did not wake up this morning thinking like, but I have a clear plan now. Good. And what's nice is when you're living congruent and, and that just makes me feel like I can help more people. And when you fix those things, you start to open up new doors, I feel like. And the unknown is beautiful. You have to. Right. All right. Let's dive in. No, I love that. that was Thank me, you. This was me reflecting because this is something that means a lot to me. And Yeah. We'll, we'll talk about it later, but yeah, I want to, I'll bring an update whenever we do a second interview, yeah, whenever please. you're back, or maybe we'll do it in Nashville or, or New York. And I want to be able to talk about an update and it'll just be between you and me. And we'll do it on, on that episode. Um, please do. Now we talked about overcoming. Okay. You know, you're a spiritual man. We talked about how you overcome being too trusting. You are running so many things, man. And I'm, I'm just purposely keeping it very ambiguous. Like, the joint ventures, you have, you have things moving all over the place. How do you find balance? But really my real question is like, what are your rules with balance? Cause that's really what it comes down to, right? So if you, I see how much you're taking what, five to 10 meetings a day. And these are high level meetings. You have to yeah. show up, you're prepared. There's money on the line. It's your time on the line. What is your Monday through Friday? Or I guess Monday through Sunday, realistically, yeah. what's your breakdown? So with everything that's going on, and I, I'm always adding more. So there's more joint ventures. There's more companies that we're acquiring or merging with or building. My mind just works better with a lot going on. And a lot of people don't understand the way my mind thinks because they might be want, focused on one thing and they can do that well and that's what they do. Now the problem lies, 2020 especially, if that one thing that you do, there is no relevance in the market, well, you're screwed. So I'm glad I'm the way that I am because we've, I hate the word pivot, but we've pivoted so many of our businesses to cater to what the market's needed, needs were. We created new products, new technologies. We had distribution set up for whether they were hand sanitizers, contact tracing devices and apps. Um, we just, we focused on what the need of the market was. And when you have access to so much and so many great people and talent and resources, you can get a product or a service out the door, lightning speed. And you can, I don't want to use the word monetize it, but you can make sure you protect the downside of whatever the market's doing. I, I said to Oscar before, I never focus on things I can't control. There's so many people I spoke to the last few years that they want to talk about Trump, they want to talk about Biden, they want to talk about vaccines. I'm like, I don't have time for that because that doesn't put money in my pocket. That doesn't pay the bills. If you guys want to have a conversation about your political needs and desires or what the economy's doing or rents in cities, I don't have time for that. I need to focus on what I can control because everything else is just noise and you're going to lose everything you've built. And so many people are just, I don't blame it. They, 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 the newspapers, I feel like it's 99, I don't think there's newspapers anymore, but they're watching TV and all it is is doom and gloom, doom and gloom. They go online, doom and gloom, doom and gloom. They go everywhere. They, go to, they can't go to the because office it anymore. It works though. But, but I, I don't subscribe to that mentality. I never no. did. I subscribe to, well, 
this is going to run out of coffee soon. I'm going to go downstairs and fill it up. I know I can make that happen. I'm not going to focus on who's going to be in the presidency, who's, what rules are going to be coming out of Congress, who's fighting with who. That is noise and it's destructive behavior. You can watch it. If you want to watch it, watch it for entertainment purposes, a half hour, crack up at the nonsense that's going on, and then go back to your life of what you can control. That's... That's who I am. That's how I, that's how I operate, and, and I'll always operate like that. And people get intimidated by me because they can't connect with me on what mainstream media or, or what's happening, what they think is happening. That's not even what's happening. That's what that's what they're portraying. Um, and you brought up TMZ before, like that they want you to see something. So here's everything we can at something, and that's the same thing that happens in, in regular media. So if if you subscribe to that, you're I think you're wasting your time. I think go go out and hang out with your family or go out to a nice dinner. Like, yeah. Like, and, and the one thing here is is being in marketing now and, and like just understanding how marketing, psychology, sales, and, and even getting into like advertising works, right? The reason the news works is because it opens a loop. It's fear-based, right? Yeah. Humans, from back when we were cavemen and there wasn't a newspaper or a channel, right? That it was oh, wow, this is, this is going on, right? If you actually look at, like, what kind of energy, what, what articles are they sharing on the news? Morning news, nighttime yeah. news. You realize that almost guaranteed 75% or more are about deaths, shootings, riots. Like, yeah. things, it's a negative thing because it means you need to check back in because this world's crumbling. Yeah. And if you're not, now you're out of the loop and you're going to be at, di- you're going to be disadvantaged, right? Yeah. And a mentor told me in college, he goes, Connor, if it's important enough, someone will tell you. And at that point, yeah. look it up. And I've been doing that a few years. All of my family, for the most part, like uh, parents to aunts, uncles, they read the paper every day. And, and it's almost something that I want to do because I've always been big on, you know, wait, growing up on a farm, it's like my dad and I would always grab 6 a.m. breakfast, even yeah. through college. We'd meet yeah. at the restaurant and he always read the paper. And then like, you see it and I wanted to do it too. Even when I didn't know how to read the paper as a kid, just like, make I just the sound, it open it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you know that sound of like folding it and I'm hanging out with like the, the, <laughs> the old boys crew at 6 a.m. Mm-hmm. and I'm like the youngest guy and I just wanted to fit in. Yeah. Just like you had said earlier, like yeah. I was fortunate to start hanging around older people and I realized they give a different type of energy because if you give them authenticity, and they see in your eyes that you are really hungry just to learn. And yeah. you're not ever taking advantage. It's, I see you as someone that might be able to share something. You, you've shared so many stories today, but you're also providing just through story, right? Facts tell, stories sell. You yeah. are selling me on a better life and something that I want to live more congruently. Now, fear-based news, you guys, I highly recommend just cut out news. Do a 30-day <laughs> detox and just see where your life's at. Like literally delete the news app, whatever. Um, and I promise you life gets better and all of a sudden you're able to start channeling that energy towards a better sure. life. And that energy that comes back, all of a sudden you start to realize, damn, my life is a little better. Yeah. Um, and they don't even do the, uh, they don't have those little fluff segments anymore in the news. You know, you don't see like, oh, this border collie had 25 puppies today. Like they, there's, there's nothing good anymore. A lot it's of just, times they'll, they'll, what I've noticed is they'll feed one in, right? Do they still they'll, have, they'll, they'll, have they'll, they'll feed one in, but it's very quick. It's like, um, uh, <laughs> And three Sundays from today, <laughs> come support your local Special Olympics organization yeah. um, at this field, right? And it's like, awesome. The truth is, is when you understand how media works, and it all comes down to viewership, which comes down to money, whether we're talking March Madness, yeah. and why they're getting some of the lowest viewership ever, because all the big teams lost. The, yeah. the schools that have the viewership are on news, too. It works because they know you're going to come back, yeah, right? And if right. it's a business model. And then on the TMZ thing, because we had, the, from what I remember, right, we were talking about TMZ prior to recording. And this was something I heard on another podcast earlier this week. TMZ is a $50 million annual dollar company, right? Like, they do crazy numbers. Yeah. And it is all built around destroying and pulling out pieces and making bullshit up, for the most part, right? For celebrities. Now... It's hard to ever relate to a celebrity, and in, in my opinion, today it's a little, ah, I have to be careful. Where I grew up, that's the polar opposite, right? That's the other end of the spectrum, and I realize now I look up to them. I don't see them as like, oh, you got lucky, right? Yeah. So Ashton Kutcher grew up very close to where we were raised, and then the little town of 4,000, right? One of the only claims to fame is <laughs> the, the only president from the state of Iowa was born and raised in West Branch, right? Um, if the joke is if it wasn't on Interstate 80, there probably wouldn't be a West Branch anymore. Yeah. Um, and I, where I'm going with all of this is 
Don't go it, there. It doesn't make <laughs> sense for, for people to, like a business model that tears people down. I think in, in my eyes, it's a very similar light to the news and how it works. It's yeah. fear-based. But the, the challenge is, is human emotion. We love seeing people grow. And we love to support the underdog. But now I'm seeing how when you get to a certain level, and you felt this, and I could see it in why we talked about how you filter people in your yeah. life and how you had to go through the hard part, is that they make money based on pulling out your life, your day-to-day -day life, and just looking for anything sure. to create a story. And they're going to find it. They're gonna, like I said, nobody is perfect. They're, gonna, they're not only going to find it, they'll create they'll it. Create it, yeah. Right, right. No, and I'm, I'm glad we touched on that. That's just something that if you would talk to me six months ago, I'm like, yeah, it's easy. Let's do it. Like, these people deserve to... To, to have these parts of their life brought out, right? Yeah. What if there was a, a TMB, right? Like for business TMB. owners, that would not be good. <laughs> no. That would, I don't even know what TMC stands for, but it wouldn't be good. Someone could do that. <laughs> It'd be a hundred million dollar a year business. <laughs> do not do that. Um, <laughs> now you mentioned earlier, Ryan, you never had a mentor, man. No. So you had awesome parents, but I don't want to take that route because that's too easy. Who the hell influenced you? Like outside of parents. Yes, I the get the childhood. The, like, the streets. As corny as that sound, the streets, uh, just learning. I, learning? I learned. <laughs> Private I, Catholic school. Yeah, just, 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 I, every business I went into, even with the beauty industry, I got my ass kicked, but I loved it. I loved knowing the, where the bodies were buried. I loved learning everything of what not to do because that prepared me to be successful in that business. And I went into the music industry, got my ass kicked, got used and abused. I had, I was a, I was um, a blank check for producers. They were just using me to create music, and I loved the experience. And there I was, foolishly, here you go. Here's a check. Go make that song. Um, then in um, aviation and hotel, I, every industry I go into, I am ready, willing, and able to get my ass kicked because that is how you learn. Um, so that's, that was my, that's been my mentor. Can I say mentor anymore? Is it woe mentor? Human? Humentor? What's, what's the right term? Humentor. That's, that's, that's the yeah. word. Uh, I never, um, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I, I never, I, I idolize certain people like Henry Ford. A lot of his quotes and what he did I, resonates with me. Um, but no, no. I, and I, honestly, I get inspiration talking with people like you. I love talking with startups and, and feeling their energy and why they went into it. You know, what's really sad to see, and, and I can't help them all, but the initial phase of an of a entrepreneur that's going into a startup, they're full of fire, energy, passion. They're like, they're going to do this. Then they go the valuation route. Then they go the fundraising route. And, and if you watch some of these pitches, you can, you can see it, even if you don't know the people. Watch their first pitch, and it's just, like, amazing. Watch 10 pitches later, they look like they're, they're doing a, a eulogy. Like there's just, everything sucked out of them. They have no, nothing. You need to secure this <laughs> No emotion in this no. one, Bill. Zero. <laughs> Zero. You're not human, read this. It's sad. It's, <laughs> but I love, I love to inspire people. I love to, you know, and it's important for me to let people, here's another really important aspect of what I do. It piggybacks to what I'm saying. It's important for an entrepreneur, if I'm working with a team, I need to let them get their ass kicked. Yeah. I'm not doing them a service if they don't realize you need to go through experiences, you need to become seasoned, you, you need to know how to handle problems. Yeah. Now I'm there to make sure it doesn't go too far because I didn't have that. So it's rewarding for me to give that back. I, again, could I have gone to my dad for certain things? Yeah, did I foolishly not? Yeah, no I didn't because I felt like this is my journey I, I and, uh, and I want to, take onus of, as to where it goes for it. It touches on your lottery ticket example. Like, I don't want people to think, oh, I only have what I have because of my dad. Yeah. Well, yeah, we all have certain positives and negatives because of our family and our relationships. That's everybody. You can't just, it's, 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 it's everybody. But yeah. so it's important for me to tell my journey, pick the good and the bad from my, both of my parents, pick the good, I should say. I, I, wanted, I want be that piece. Of be aware of the bad because yeah. that's, that's in some version I'm realizing in life is like I have to be aware of it because as much as we get the, the positive traits there's there's also drawbacks and, and the beauty yeah. is you have to be aware of them I don't think you focus on it mm -mm. in life right because some I don't want to necessarily go down that rabbit hole but I'm, I'm really into you know a lot of the books teach you focus on your strengths right strength finders 2.0 that was a huge part of entrepreneurial school going to business school like a lot of self-development assessments are a great place to start right I think for anyone that's ever looking to get into business, one of the easiest ways, hop on Netflix, 
and watch The Secret or read the book, right? That is something that I give to anyone that has a little entrepreneurial spirit simply because I think it does start with the mindset. Then the second level for me that really helped me was taking Strength Finders 2.0. Now that's a book you buy for $12.95 and you open the book and the back page, you rip this thing off, you have a code. You go online, don't have any technology, do it in the morning. Like I'm saying, be fully focused, be fully aware. And you take this, it takes 20 minutes. What's nice with an assessment, and most people aren't used to taking them, is it gives you an unbiased feedback on what you are. Now, at the end of it, it's going to tell you your top five strengths. Yeah. And then when you start reading through them, you're mind blown because it is speaking about you. And it's like <laughs> this book, how the hell does this shit know me? And it's going to tell you what you're good at and shit to be aware of. And that was the journey that started freshman year of college, wow. getting into Tony. So anyway, I'm just trying to provide some insight because I, I know there's all these levels and you and me are having a conversation. I, I want to make sure it's always relatable. And I know there's, there's been so many takeaways here. So you didn't have a mentor. You really experienced life on your Like, you have a maturity. You have an EQ that, that is well above most people. And I'm, I'm thinking that but that only also breeds But only through experience. Exactly. I only Going know what I know from experience. I don't know anything more or less than anybody else. I've just been, I've been through more than the average person at a younger age. And um, that allows me to learn from it. And I, I, a lot of people don't learn from it. That's, that's awful to watch. And they just keep repeating the same things over and over again. And... Um, Oscar, what's the definition of insanity? Doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. I mean, yep. that's, I mean, so many people do that. And they do it because they're stuck on this hamster wheel. They do it because they, they, they have a mortgage payment or their car payment or hospital bills. Like, it's so difficult to get off that path. Mm -hmm. I yeah. get it, because you just feel trapped. And that's just an awful way to live. If you're, not, if you're not doing what you love, as much as you can every second of the day, then you're not living. You're, 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 you're like in a, you're in hell or you're in purgatory. Like, and you can't, you can't get out of that. And it's tough. That's why I was going back to 2016. There was, the there was nothing. There was, I had nothing. I didn't go to my parents. That was, it was my problem. It wasn't there. They, I wasn't going to say, Hey, fix this daddy, fix this. Like everybody else. It was my problem. And I had to rebuild with less than nothing. I had to rebuild with mountains of debt and people that just disappeared. I was like in Vietnam, but with no troops around me. Like I was just alone. Uh, so I learned, well, if I can do that and be talking with you today and hopefully resonating with people, then there's nothing that I can't do minus health related issues. I know there's nothing that I can't accomplish and with the right people, with the right resource, with the right drive. But you know, people need to realize it, it, it could always be worse. Yeah. And enjoy where you're at right now. Don't don't think it could don't think it, it could be better. Like, cause what is Jeff Bezos and Elon Musk? Are they just who has more each day? Like, they like, don't have time for that. <laughs> you know they don't. But like, but on the outside it looks like that. Yeah, right? like, like, like just it, it could always be worse. But be happy with what you got right now and find joy in it and, and smile because that goes back to spirituality. It goes back to energy. It goes back to momentum. You start feeling good about something each day and then it snowballs and you feel a little bit better. You feel a bit stronger. Opportunities start happening. You start opening up your world a little bit, bit better. But the important thing when you do that is don't fall into a trap and invite somebody that could ruin all that. Don't fall into a neg and And when I meet a negative person, you might as well just give me food poisoning. Like I reject it. I don't want to be around any negativity. Well, you, I just distance quick. Nothing. Right? I don't, don't ever burn bridges, no, but distance. I don't, I don't need your negativity because yeah. you know what the reality is? Your negativity outweighs my positivity. Yeah. Negativity always wins. It's a draining power that just gets bigger and bigger and bigger and it gets bigger because it's sucking everybody else's positivity. So just, I, I'm not here to fix you. I'm not your priest. I'm not your parent. I'd love to do great things with you, but if you're going to be here and you're going to be just a drain on me, you got to go. I got to fire you from my life. I don't care if you're family, friend, you got to go. Yep. Yep. And, and I wish you the best, right? Always. And, and like in, in the spiritual sense, I look at it like, you know, it's never that anyone's below you or, you know, above you, but in, in this way, it's like, I see everyone and I meet anyone and it's like, we're all on our own journey. And so yeah. if I, if I see that at this point, I can pick up pretty freaking quick. I feel like on just that, again, the linguistics, cause the little, the little tiny, how they refer to their company, right? Are they using a lot of possessive language? Cause yeah. I used to do that. Right. And, and I catch it now, but I see, wow, I look back and if I talk about my company, <laughs> you know, I have a team of 50 plus like, no, quality leaders, it's collective. It's we, Always. it's our, even if it's you, 
it's Always. us. And then when things go wrong in the business, it's still 100% my fault. Yeah. Even if the whole team knows, in no way was this his fault. Yeah. But by doing that and taking full accountability, this is something new that I, I just started doing in the last yeah. two years, right? I read about it. A lot of these things where I talk about them now because I've finally implemented them. Yeah. Like I've read, I've done the readings and damn, why did I wait so long? <laughs> Life is good. Life is good. Well, I want to wrap things up because I want to ask you a question. You are a high level dude. And just for some context, I don't need a numerical amount, but with all the things you have going on, you are so down to earth, man. You, I consider you a friend. I, I think we both consider each other friends. Absolutely. It started on LinkedIn. We connected, we hopped on a call and just literally with no objective, <laughs> it was, oh yeah, it was the baseball thing. And then it went to it, it Lake Okiboji. I mean, all kinds yeah, of things. Yeah. Oh, the Okiboji. Yes. <laughs> yes. That'll, we'll do an interview there. There's some cool people. I'm sure we can interview. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we just have to go in like four months out of the year because it's the Midwest, right? Um, can you give me an idea of just a range of what your company's value is? Now, I'm not looking for a number, but I'm just genuinely yeah. curious of like, when you have this many moving parts, I don't know a professional like you, but you're down to earth. That's the only reason why I feel comfortable asking. It's, it's substantial. We're, uh, we're going through a, um, a public offering, so there's not much that I can share, yeah. but it'll be all public soon. Uh, it's substantial, and, it, and it's only because I slash we know how to create value yeah. uh, and very yield-driven. Yield so we want to create companies that spin off a profit, spin off a distribution for shareholders, for investors, for our own, our own people. So if you're, this is another thing that I, I, I am preaching to startups – if you're forced, I don't think it's fair that an investor gives you $100,000 and that that investor now either has a tax write-off because you went out of business in five years or you have a liquidity event and maybe they make more money or hopefully they at least get their money back. I think it's, I think it's a very prudent exercise for companies to say, okay, I'll take your $100,000. We're going to give you $5,000 a year in a yield. What it does is it gives the investor back something which I think is very important while they're waiting for the investment to pay off. But it also makes sure that that company makes money. They have to do things smart. They have to hire the right people. They have to create a real business because they have to pay a dividend to the investor. Yeah. And those are simple practices that I think, that I believe firmly, investment vehicles such as you know people buy bonds because they want the yield. Smart money wants to protect the principal and they want a little juice back on their money. I think that's where the future goes for public companies. I think you know, we're gonna go back to blue chip days where you have solid companies producing solid earnings year over year and that's a safe place to be. Because uh, the world is very volatile right now. Yeah. And, and you know what's unfortunate is that I'm a big believer in, in cryptocurrencies and digital assets. We've been in that space for a long time. But it's also, very ridiculously sexy right now where people think they can go and buy a cryptocurrency coin and then it's going to be worth a million dollars a coin like the, the the mindset of behind it you still need real businesses behind those digital assets they still need to do real work that creates real value so the money going into that currency can produce an upside um so answer your question, I'll be able to share more of that in a public manner shortly, but it, it's grown to be quite a substantial holding and only because we got great people, great assets. And um, How, what is the team size? Just so you can With all the holdings, there's thousands and thousands of employees. In, in, I mean, that's around the world, right? Around the world. Yeah, it's uh, it's the, not the, even central. The to core America. team, very small inner circle of management. Yeah, what is, is that size? Uh, four. Yes. Yeah. Yes, that four. is what... That's what we've realized is if you want to keep growing, you have to be lean. And we had yeah. to trim a lot of fat. And there were just inefficiencies. Yeah. And but everybody, not one greedy, egotistical yes. person. Everybody's here. We want to create, we want to protect our own. We, we built the vehicle because we wanted to protect our own assets. Exactly. And it actually became very valuable for, uh, to invite other people in because... You know, something we do very well is, especially in real estate, we can take a dormant asset or a dormant building that's illiquid for the, for the real estate owner, and we can, we can make money with that value. We can put businesses inside it. We can increase the rent, the tenant, tenancy. Uh, we create the sale leaseback model where you own the building and you own the business in, in the building, and therefore you, you create a really strong asset on the balance sheet. And then 
that's real. You can touch that. That's, that's, I love things that you can touch. It goes back to the beauty industry. I love consumer goods. I love understanding what the retail market wants. I love actually owning and touching something that you can feel. Um, uh, there's, there's, there's another, you know, go, going back to um, early on, there's, there's a great, I wish I came up with it, but there's, let me ask you a question. If you had $86,400 in the bank, $86,400, and somebody, and somebody stole $10 from you, would you spend the other $86,390 trying to get it back? Absolutely not. And it's, that is solely tied to ego. I'm realizing life. Like, <laughs> I have to, and because I had to go through this, right. I used to go out of my way to make sure you know not to fuck with me. Right. Like, and, and when there was nothing, like, I look back and I laugh because I'm like, dude, Connor, you, you're still a nobody, right? And you, you you're think, always a somebody. You think, yes. I Come agree. on. But Come on, CP. <laughs> let's go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, you, you're good. I love this. God, I'm glad we connected. Well, um, let me finish, let me finish yes, the rest of the it. thought. So now, well, in the day, there's 86,400 seconds in the day. And if someone was to rob 10 seconds from you, would you spend the rest of them? trying to get it back or you know get angry about it or fight with them or get even it's not good so it's always good to relate things back to like that. different um, mindsets and how you can you know that's one of the reasons why i can quickly say a prayer for somebody why i can wish them well because i'm not going to allow them to rob any time from me just like i wouldn't let them rob money from me or yeah. something that i felt was valuable um, which is time why did you agree to do this interview? You are one of the busiest guys I know. You're from uh, New York. I'm asking you because I've never asked another guest, but I want to start asking, like, why the hell did I don't you know. get Oscar I'm, I'm time? wondering now. I don't, I don't know the answer. If you asked me before, I would have had a good answer, but now I have no idea why I'm sitting here. I love it. I love it. Uh, well, let's bring this all together, my man. This has been a blast. And... You are such an authentic individual. What I really look up to is the business professionals that are just absolutely killing in life, that are living congruently, that are taking the time to... I know you're at a place emotionally, and, and you can tell money has never been... A, for a long time, money is not about it, right? It's the jewel, the vehicle, I see it, but everything about you, you're, you're an authentic individual, man. And before this interview, when you were coming, I was like... I was a little intimidated. There's a couple guests that I'll I get a little like that. That's cool. Yeah, yeah, because I was like, <laughs> I hope All right, I can relate with them. It just means like, that I'm doing something right. I, I had to really know. do a little research to figure out what the hell all this meant. Like, I don't know like, what it means. Hey, <laughs> well, that's where it comes down to this core leadership team and thousands, a team of thousands, right? Yeah. How can people get in contact with you? And, and what is your message to the world? How can people get in contact with you? And, and what do you want to leave people yeah, with? Yeah, just so you know, I mean, as you know, uh, get back to everybody. Uh, I only use LinkedIn and Twitter, so Brian J. Esposito on both, uh, or my website, eie.rocks. eie.rocks. That's right. And I get back to everybody within an hour, usually. Uh, on and off the plates, my mentality. I don't leave anything hanging. And, um, you know, what, I, what I'm trying to leave my... settling on that then you know the world is our oyster but um i i don't get motivated by things or, or people that have things you're a person just like me and you can lose all that just like i did yeah so it doesn't mean anything my man hey. i appreciate you ryan like you no too, other pal. thanks connor so oscar glad. you are the man oscar well oscar's he the real all, man he made all this magic. happen oh no did and, you hit and record this is just part of it <laughs> Uh, did we record? <laughs> did we? No. And I just want to remind everyone, you guys, thanks so much for all the support. This has been unreal, right? This has been a journey. This has been two years in, in the making to get this podcast going. Oscar is the reason why it's here. And what's wild is just in the first eight weeks, you know, this is episode 10, which is wild. Double digits. Here's to that. Yes, and <laughs> hey, when we started it, we were like, the only way we're going to do it is we have to be consistent. 
and it's going to be every week, right? But what's wild is through that consistency, you and me have both learned so much. I don't think we got into it thinking, damn. And the feedback that we're getting from everyone, thank you. Please leave a comment below. Without stating too much, there are some incredible people at the exact same level that I'm just mind blown they're willing to hang out with us for a little bit. Um, and these conversations are only going to pick up. Now, our guarantee is that we're going to be vulnerable. We're going to talk the, the truth of, of how life works, right? Because a congruent personal life and professional life, they have to be intermolded, right? They have to be congruent, right? And for that support, please leave a comment below and or like just to make sure that we can get this message to as many people as possible, right? Our goal is that every time we go into a new episode is make sure that we're, we do at least one or two things better than the previous episode. So today you should be seeing the new intro and hopefully those will change, but every little step. And I appreciate you. Thank you again, Brian. Thank Third you, cheers. I don't usually cheers on, on coffee, but let's no, go. It's all good. Happy Saturday. We'll see you on the Thanks, inside. Thanks guys. Boom. Hey, that was nice, fun. Nice work. Was that, I always lose track of the time. How we and I know that's when it's a good conversation. An hour before.